For the following exercises, find a domain on which each function f is one-to-one -one and non-decreasing. Write the domain in interval notation and then find the inverse function of f restricted to that domain. Okay, so first thing is, to gain a little insight, graph this thing. All right, throw it into the calculator and what's gonna get uh, spit out of the calculator is something that looks like this. Where we have a parabola and the parabola is going to intersect that x-axis at positive five. So now, um, over what interval is now this function increasing? And remember, you read it from left to right. In other words, they're asking about the domain of it being non-decreasing. So what does it mean to be non-decreasing? Well, it means one of two things. It means either to be increasing or it means to be staying constant, right? Or flat. That would be also non-decreasing. So there's only really one area, and I'll highlight it, okay? There's only really one area here, or, or one type of, one half, I'll say, of the graph there that shows a non-decreasing portion, right? If we read it from left to right, it's going to be from then 5 all the way out to infinity. So that would be the domain, all right? Inclusive of 5 and not inclusive of infinity because it cannot possibly go out to infinity. So this is the domain, okay? If the domains are uh, a little challenging to you know, kind of think about, check out our domain playlist, all right? Now, um, the next part of this is to then uh, find the inverse function, okay, of this thing. So series of steps, easy to follow. First thing is, don't write it like this, change that to a y, okay? Anywhere you see f of x, just get rid of it, write a y. Now what you're going to do is everywhere you see a y, put an x, and everywhere you see an x, put a y. So watch. So it's just simply going to look like this now. That's supposed to be an arrow. So it's going to look like x is equal to now y squared minus 5. All you got to do is solve this for y now. Okay? So add the 5 on over. Right? So this is going to look just like this. x plus 5 is equal to y squared. We don't really like the way that looks though, right? We don't really like to have that on the left, on the right. So we're just going to, you know, swap them. No big deal. And now all you got to do is just take the square root of both sides to get rid of that square. Okay? So now what you're left with is you're left with y will be equal to the square root of x plus 5. Okay? This right here, my friends, is the inverse function. Now, what you'd like to, what you should do is not leave this in terms of y anymore. Okay? Just to help you out. All you're going to do then at the end is just write f of x minus 1 because this is the inverse function notation. All right? So um, I can't even read my own hieroglyphics in here, so let me just fix that. That's a little better. So what we realize is that this is the um, inverse function. Now, what is the domain of this inverse function? Okay? The domain of the inverse function, remember, is anything under a square root better be positive. Okay? It has to be positive. This value cannot be negative. So what that means is if I were to choose an x value of, let's say, negative 5, what would be the result under that radical or under that square root? It would be 0, right? And you can take the square root of 0. Square root of 0 is simply 0. 0 times 0 is 0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. But you cannot take a negative number. Right? You cannot take the square root, I should say, of a negative number. So if I were to plug in here, let's say 6, negative 6, well, then this would have been under the radical negative 1. Ooh, no, 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 no. We can't actually take the square root of that. Okay? Because no two numbers multiplied by themselves will give you a negative value. You know a negative times a negative is a positive, And a positive times a negative is a negative. So it can't happen. All right? So what we realize is that we're restricted here a little bit. And the domain here of this interval, uh, excuse me, this inverse function is going to be negative 5 all the way out to infinity. Okay? Anything larger, essentially, than negative 5. So you could write it like this. You could write x must be greater than or equal to negative 5. That's fine. If you had to use interval notation, you'd say anything including negative 5. That's the whole point of the bracket. Bracket means include this number. All the way to then... Infinity, you can't include infinity because it's not a number, it's an idea, so that's why you use the parenthesis there. Okay? This would be the interval notation, IN, interval notation. And that would be then the um, overall domain, okay, of the inverse. However, though, I 
That might be the answer. I don't really quite fully understand exactly what they're looking for in the second part. But if we were restricted, and that's what I think it means here, is that we are restricted to this domain, okay, um, of the original function. So since the domain of the inverse function is larger, it covers more values, right? It goes from negative 5 all the way to infinity, and this only goes from 5 to infinity. Um, what we would say now is that if I were restricted to this domain for this inverse function, I would just simply note that this is included, right, in this interval. So what I'm trying to say here in a lot of words, I guess, but simply is that the answer, if we are restricted to this domain, the answer would be that same exact answer uh, from five to infinity, all right, for the domain. And like I mentioned in the prior problem, if you're not sure what I'm saying, neither am I. So at this last part, I'm not really sure what they're looking for. But uh, anyway, hope that helped. A majority of it. I hope 90% of it helped. The last 10%, not really sure. But um, if 90% of it helped, give us uh, give us 90% of a subscription. So just hit 90% of that subscribe button. Take care.